Designing Components with iView Section 4 In this section, we will start off by working with form components and designing our login and sign up form pages. We will also work with table components. We will also add iView notices to our web application. We will also utilize the navigation components that iView provides. In the end of this section, we will talk about some tips and tricks to help improve your designing skills. Designing form components using iView. In this video, we will create our login and sign up components and use iView form to design their layout. I have already created a sign up component and use the layout that we have used for our landing page. Here in the main body, I would like to create two forms, one for logging in and second to sign up with. So let's start by creating a row with type flex and justification center and a gutter value of 16. Inside this row, I would like to create two columns with a span of 8. Inside the column, I would like to use an iView card. Similarly, in the second column, I would use sign up. So let's go to our iView documentation. From the iView documentation, under the form section, we have a few examples. For login, let's use this example. We are starting by opening a form component and providing a reference name form inline. This reference name will be used in our script section. Here, when we are returning a data, another attribute is rules and we will define rules in our script section with the name of rule inline. Each property will be an array and have a required set to true and a message that will go with that required trigger and a trigger animation is set to blur. Similarly for password, the required is true with a message and the trigger blur. In addition, we have supplied that the password must be a string with a minimum length of 6 and a prop inline is used to vertically and horizontally design the form. Let's go to our browser and see the effect of the inline prop. As you can see, form is aligned horizontally. Let's see if we remove the inline prop. Now the form is aligned vertically. Inside the form component, we have form item component, which will be using a prop for each item. Inside a prop, we have an input and we have defined the v hyphen model to two way bind the data with the form inline and the user element. The inputs can also use the iView icons with the type to show the icon inside the input. We have also defined primary type button with an click trigger to call the method handle submit. Once the handle method submit is triggered, providing the name, we will use dollar reference method to validate the data of the form by using the provided rules defined in the data. Let's go to our browser and see how this works. By clicking the sign in button, the validation will be triggered and an alert message will show that the validation has failed. Let's go back to iView documentation and see if we can find iView components to use for our sign up form. Let's go ahead and use this form. Similarly, in the sign up form, we are using reference form validate for the two way binding as well. And for the rules, we are using rule validate. Looking at the script section, we have a rule validate array for each input. 
The first form item is an input, which is using the form validate to a binding with the name rules. The second one is email, which is doing the same form validation using the rule set for mail. The third form item here is a select component with three options for selecting cities. The fourth item is a date and time picker. IV provides a date picker component to which we provide type date and then we can simply bind the form validation to the element date. For time picker, we can simply use the IV time picker component with the type time. Next form item is gender, which is making use of the radio component that IV provides. The radio component is opened with the radio group and inside the radio group we have radio component for each control. Next form item is checkbox group. In the checkbox group we have checkbox components which only receive a label. To make use of text areas we will define an input form and provide a type text area. Sizing can be controlled by using the auto size attribute and providing it minimum rows and maximum rows value. In the end we will use the handle submit method to validate the form data on pressing the submit button and in addition we will be able to reset the form data by simply using the reset button which will trigger the handle reset method. The handle reset method will make use of reset field function to reset the form. Let's go to our browser to see if it works. As you can see every input that required was set to true had a red indicator next to the label and pressing the submit button will trigger all the validation error messages and pressing the reset button will reset and remove all the validations. That is it for this video.